Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, uh, thank you very much for the introduction of the class and also the introduction of myself. Um, today, I want to talk about the, uh, the graph system. So the title is the, um, like this, developing a global over the top network of content for open exploration. So, um, I'd like to start from the video that was created uh, in KODMC in 2017. Uh, that is uh, originally intended to uh, for the demo video or the concept movie for the museum uh, in KO because the, the KO, uh, how to say, um, at that time, uh, KO. Uh, wanted to have a museum and now actually it is already built. Um, unfortunately, this concept of video did not, you know, um, used uh, for the actual museum. Um, however, I still think about the idea um, for exploring uh, the information. So it means um, the video says you know that is a museum the, the context of the video is a museum however i believe it it can be uh used for any of the information so um let's start uh the video um and kunitake please mute your video when you play it so that i can give the english narration understood okay so but i don't know how oh okay yeah i know So now you can see the the black screen. This black one. screen. Black yeah. screen. So okay, here we go. The audio is muted. So this is a DMC concept movie, originally produced in two thousand and seventeen introducing the concept of a new generation of museums. One of the advantages of making the collections of history museums and art museums digitally accessible via a website is that users can then browse the digital collection utilizing keyword search to focus in on what they want to find. But for keyword search can be difficult for people who don't already know enough to get where they want to go or for people looking for fresh ideas. Currently, many of the so-called digital expositions that are held in museums and galleries don't, be gone, don't go beyond using digital content as secondary support for the physical content being exhibited. The DMC Research Center is aiming for a completely new form of digital museum. Today, collections of the world's museums can end up buried in warehouses, undiscoverable, in dead storage. But what if, what if these collections could be exhibited fully digitally without spatial limitations? Each piece in the collection could be encircled with a variety of contextual links leading to related items, presenting a world that each individual can search and interpret in their own way. By surrounding items in the collection with diverse content and connecting everything in a new type of digital catalog, content could become discoverable in ways that could not be reached by keyword search alone with deeper understanding and insight. DMC's goal is to interconnect content from museums around the world in this new kind of digital catalog, creating a universal museum based on contextual networking, which anybody can configure content to make their own digital exhibition rooms for private viewing or open sharing. Currently, DMC researchers are working on contextual networking as part of the development of a catalog system called Mosaic, the Museum of Shared and Interactive Cataloging, 
We are especially investigating how catalogs can be visualized and expressed in a virtual exhibition room, as well as the implications for archiving such digital collections. Thank you very much, the live translation. So, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, okay, back to the... So, um, at, in, in 2017, when I made this video clip, I saw that we handle um, the graph you saw on the video um, directly by humans, so human manipulations, human operations. However, after the research of that, it's, it's really hard to handle all the information. And then I noticed that the, um, we need to change the way of thinking. Um, it means using the computi computational power to analyze the information before the human beings involves. So the question here is, um, can AI cover all the files in the world? In the video, you, you saw the, you know, the bottom figure like this, how to know. So here you can see the, the, the image, right? And then I'm now thinking that all the contents here is a kind of a limited number in a kind of a potential um, a contents that she wants to know. Um, so it means uh, in, in the world, so the many, many files um, I calculated from the um, how many storage we need uh, in the future and now, um, and then divided into the um, regular file size. And then it seems that, I don't know, nobody knows the exact number. Uh, however, it's roughly 44,000 trillions of files. So I'm now thinking that among those 44,000 trillions files, I want to have some candidates of the content I want to see, right? Um, however, the current technologies of AI cannot handle this number of files. Usually, um, actually I show that at maximum, or at most, um, the, the AI usually uh, does the training phase. And then the training data is about millions, okay? So the millions, billions, trillions, and then 44,000 trillions. Um, I forgot the, how to say in English, you know, the thousand trillions, maybe it has a, a better description. However, <clears throat> it's, it's, how to say, the, it's totally different order of the, um, of the number. So, um, and also, if AI analyze this number of the contents, it means CPU needs to read all the data. So when thinking about that, it is totally impossible, right? And also, um, as the video says, the information here is a kind of here means the bit, the, the, the here, here, there's a kind of potential contents. When we put in some keywords into the system, in the, 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 the search engines, you can get the contents that include the key, keyword. It's very nanoscopic content. You know that contents, so you know the keyboard, and then you can get the content. It's not the information I want to have. 
I want to have the information. That I don't know. So I can't expect any keywords about that. So how do we do about that? So the two points I, I'm now talking about. One thing is how to get the potential content that you don't know right now. And then how to realize it with AI, you know, from the computational viewpoint. So here is a, a kind of a brief summary of the difficulties. Uh, it contains the difficulties I just explained and also several more. So um, when, when, so for example, um, some of the university students notice I got some ideas about AI technologies and then, hey, okay, this is interesting. It's a clever idea, right? And then once you have the uh, startup, however, how do they get the content for the training? Right now, content holders, actually we, you know, each individual has their, has our own contents, but do you, really want to share the contents to the people, to the students who want to do the startup. Even you can say yes. How do you, do they know? You can, you are happy to provide the contents for them, right? So it, it, it is a big barrier to use the contents or to start the new content services using the content. That is one point, very big issue. Another thing, okay, you have a good database. You have a, a kind of a metadata, right? And then we're organized. The students who want to start a startup, access to your database, what is this? key, what is this value? If they need to gather hundreds of the, if they need to access to the hundreds of the content owner, they need to repeat this process again and again and again, because the database is very, very private usually, and then it is hard to get the consistent, you know, the data level. Uh, database level access. So another approach that is the making a dictionary, hey, just for the same, you know, uniform dictionary, and then all the database should follow the loop. Actually, this approach was taken in last, you know, 10, 20 years. Define the words, define the meaning, and then share the precise meaning over the world. Do you believe it is possible or not? It is usually said that that is a um, schema making issue, right? So I know many, 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 many activities that have the issue, okay? Small members, among small members, working fine, making a rule, deploys a rule, and then follows the rule. However, the scale of the community is bigger, bigger, bigger. Consistency will be losing, and then inconsistency, and then a precise finding uh, is impossible. Even within the small you know, the community like you, do you have a consistency in your directory hierarchy in your computer? Maybe just remember 10 years ago, for example, the, at the time of the snippet, I made a lot of folders. I can understand why I made this hierarchy 
of the folders. It means the meaning is changing time by time. And then the consistency of the meaning is very difficult. And then I can say impossible. The third point is the content access. I just mentioned that the permission is important, right? And also um, the boundaries to release the data at the computer. Um, Intel said that the bottleneck is an interconnect, server interconnect. That is a bottleneck. It means within the computer, once the data is in the computer, they can process. However, if the data is outside, that is a usual case. It's very tough work. So leading the data is a bottleneck right now. So all of the detail, the difficulties, um, understanding all of the difficulties, I'm now um, thinking about this approach. In between the service and the content, I want to insert a network mechanism. What is the essence of the network? Network function is a binding of things. It's not a tightly binding, tight coupling. It's a loose coupling. And then it has, it will create the flexibility between one side and the other. So in this case, the service and content. In the, in the startup example, new service and the existing content that is located within a different you know, organization or the silos. Um, making a, inserting a new network mechanism in between the service and the, the contents, um, it's realized the easier scalability because it's not a tight coupling. So it means, for example, the, the meaning level, one organization have this dictionary, another organization, this dictionary, those dictionaries are different. I'm now talking loosely coupling. So I don't mind the difference of the dictionary or the difference of the relation. I don't mind. Connectivity, that is the most important thing. Then thinking about that, the easier scalability, more flexibility, and also the lighter weights computation. That is uh, the benefit. Um, the cons, of course, inserting a networking function in between the service and content, it means it might be imperfect subs. Just imagine the, the internet 20 years ago. It is very hard to do the IP telephony. Now we have here in Zoom with video, it's wonderful. Now we can say this system is far beyond the telephone network. However, 20 years ago, it's not, right? And also it's not a, maybe the, how to say um, in the meaning, it's a little bit you know, different from what you want. But I think, I believe, it will be working. So um, here is a more detailed uh, explanation of my system. I called it the graph system because the key or the core of the system is the graph, OK? Please look at the left hand side here. So here is the silos one, two, three. Each of the silo has a content. This is actual content. This is a service layer which handle the actual content. My system is here. There's no actual content in this layer. Okay. 
So briefly introduced, here is a contents. Here is a Bacha file. This is a, a kind of a um, interpretation of the contents, a kind of abstract of the contents, right? And then here's another level, the circle. This is a catalog. This is a kind of a grouping or classification of the classification of the information. So in, in this uh, case, uh, the bar job right here is a node. And then this, we say get the catalog is the edge. Okay, so the grouping node here, node here. And then if we can uniquely identify the same Bacha file like this, then we can get together and then making a graph. It's a bit different from your um, regular or ordinary graph. We, we, the mathematical, it is a hypergraph, but I will explain about that later. So here is a graph. And then making the graph analysis using the graph here and then calculate and then get bar job files. That is maybe important for the people. So after getting the candidate here, many files here, graph representation, using the graph representation, calculate or the analyze the graph itself not analyze the content itself, analyze a graph topology, and then get the important, more important node. And then using the information, retrieving the contents from the original content holder and do more content-wide analysis. Or this service entity, will analyze the behavior of the, the human beings. And then this is a good content for you, maybe. So this is a hierarchy or the inserting, you know, the layer here. No content analysis, just a graph analysis. And then the graph consists of this virtual file, that is a vertex, and then the catalog, that is edge of the graph. You can see the layers here, content storage archives in the bottom, the graph catalogs bar of files, and then graph analysis engines that is third party developed, and then you know more and more coming, right? Any new coming graph analysis engine that is welcome. And also maybe more than that, more numbers of the applications on top of it. This is a layer. So who makes this network? At the bottom, it's very easy. The content owner has their own contents. The graph level, interpretation of the contents or the classification of the content, classification of the virtual bars. That is a contribution of the person who is familiar with the content, okay? Maybe you have some hobbies. You're not a professional but the semi-professional about that. So those people will contribute to create those interpretations and the classifications. The, and, and on top of it, graph analysis. Content owner, owner wants to do that graph analysis for the users. Third party, welcome. User community, anybody can join. And on top of it, the, uh, the top level, uh, anybody who wants to analyze the contents, contact, user context, or does any relations, that is fine. So why I took this graph approach? Because there is a very huge earlier academic research earlier of network science. First thing. It is totally 
different order of the processing compared with a uh, content analysis itself. Because the graph representation is a node ID, the pair of the node ID, that is the information. How long that node identifier? Even that is a thousand bits, not a problem, right? So, um, and also the important thing of the graph is computer can process directly without thinking any meaning, okay? So compute, computability, I don't know that is a that good correct English uh, terminology, uh, but the computation, automatic computation is very important because the users of this graph is computer, okay? So not the, not the World Wide Web. World Wide Web, it has a hyperlink. It is a graph topology, actually. It's a directional graph. But who manipulates the graph? You read the homepage, you decide which link to follow, okay? It means a human beings, uh, it, it, it needs a human being's brain. I'm not thinking computer will do this kind of job, but no thinking about the meaning. So uh, my idea is a network science, but that is uh, any data relationship uh, form a graph, okay? So um, based on this idea, and then based on the, the academic knowledge about the network science, um, I will transform the network science to the engineering field, okay? It's a very thick book, network science. Um, it's, it's totally, this thickness, okay? Um, actually, this is Japanese translation, so you, you can get it, uh, the English original. So, um, okay, our graph system design principle, maybe I need to uh, speed up, otherwise, you know, I, <laughs> I cannot uh, speak uh, to the end. <laughs> so the our graph design system principle, um, the graph system, my graph system, uh, don't miss uh, the, any potential content. That is uh, the important thing, okay? Don't aim to find the exact content you want to, you know, meet, right? It means the AI is now focusing on the fine-grained content filtering. But my idea of the network, this network, is a coarse grain before fine-grained AI. Okay, so it means that uh, inserting the layer and then coarse grain filter and then keeping that potential contents and then show it to the fine grain system. Decentralized system that is ownership based uh, because see, anybody can create the vertex in the bunch of files, I say, and then the catalog that is the H and then it's, it's free to make, okay? And then it's not the public, it, it would be the public use, but the ownership is very important. And then that is because that is the asset, because that is the interpretation, that is the intellectual activities, the result of the intellectual activities. Each individual interpretation of the contents, each individual interpretation of the classification, right? Um, that is sometimes or usually that is a private activity it means user dependent okay so this so um i want to realize the share multiple interpretations some of the interpretations might match with you but some not right um so that is the meaning of the less rigid organization but share multiple interpretation, 
but that is fine because that is a coarse grained filtering. Lightweight processing, that I explained, the graph processing is lighter than the content itself analysis. So the graph, more detail about the graph. The graph is a global network of content. That is the title of this presentation. Hypergraph, uh, that is this type of the graph. Um, Jeff explains this type, this is ordinary, but this is a kind of a generalization of the graph by the, uh, by the uh, mathematical people. Um, and then there's a non property because if we, the non property means a, um, um, there's a no property definition of each. So, for example, the Facebook case, this is a um, the friends link. Okay. I don't define these kind of things. Any relation is fine, acceptable. Edge is a budget file. No, I'm sorry. The vertex is a budget file, and the edge is a cutoff. Um, each vertices and the edges have a global unique identifier because different people will create their catalogs, their virtual files, but we need to get them together, okay, for analysis. Undirected lookup, it means um, from one to two is fine, two to one is fine, you know, any, any movement is fine. It's totally different from the World Wide Web system. It's a hyperlink one way, okay? Just imagine the, uh, how do we go through all the edges if all the laws are one way, right? If the bi-directional, we can easily to walk through the town. Um, graph represents two level of the interpretation, as I explained. The budget file is the understanding of the single contents, and then the catalog is a classification, okay? So this is the example, maybe more um, easier, uh, the easier understanding. So the, the current way of the metadata, metadata uh, adding is like this, the single contents owner is here, and then the same owner creates the fixed, you know, the metadata. That is the current way. My system here, here's a single content, right? The folk songs, because this is a sound of music. Um, and then that is open. Multiple interpretation is fine. So somebody, this guy, titles, name it, World War II in Austria. Somebody else who are interested in 8K capturing, remastering, because the sound of music, the beginning, that is 65 millimeter films captured. Maria's fashion, that is another interesting point of this movie. Dolemi song, you know that? So the different aspects. And then we, if we have the narrow, you know, narrowed title of the content, then it appeals to different users. Okay. So the budget file, how we realize it. Um, the like this, it's like a regular file, um, the kind of a packaged everything inside a single package. It has a title for the, you know, understanding of it by the human. And, and there also some thumbnails for understanding by humans. But the important thing is it has a global unique ID to identify. And also it has a, a pointers to the contents. Okay, and then anybody can make it not only the content owner, but also anybody else. And then when somebody wants to publish the budget file, they don't need to open the content itself, okay? So the next level, the classification, oh, I'm sorry, uh, grouping. The catalog realizes a grouping of the budget files. Single contents, here is several of the budget files here, and then making a group, okay? Each of the title, but that is for the human. Actually, this cat number and budget file number is important for the computers. Um, right, maybe you can understand it. Um, the budget file here, 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 um, it means 
starting from the sound of music, right? Somebody understand the sound of music makes a Maria's fashion. He or she has maybe uh, is interested in the fashion. So another bag sense. Victoria and Albert, right? Uh, museums, tapestry, right? Um, making a group. So using the graph, I can get into the sound of music, for example, from the Doremi song, and then go through the Maria's fashion and then to this back. Okay. So how do we realize a catalog? Um, a catalog has a, the, the global unique ID and then the list of the bunch of us. That is important for the computers. And then remains uh, for the human beings. Okay, the same thing. Anybody can make the catalogs, okay? Of course, the content owner wants to make the catalog, but also you can make it, okay? So now combine the bunch of files and in the catalog, you have the graph, okay? Back to the, here, bunch of files capital making a graph so the next step is a graph analysis the graph analysis the input is a graph and then analyze each of the the service wants to analyze by themselves and then with their own aspect Okay, you might think that if many of the people do the analyze of the graph, the result is the same. That is true if we analyze the entire whole graph. However, if we only focus on the limited ELD, the difference of the ELD or the difference of the algorithm or the difference of the kind of a key vertices, changing those information, then the graph analysis returns a different results. Actually, this is a big challenge um, because the um, usually the Facebook do the analysis of the graph, actually they have, right? Um, but they are doing the global view analysis of the graph. And then it is a later ordinary graph. They have the property. Sometimes it has a direction. But now it's a local view. We only have sometimes a sporadic, some of missing part, right? Hypergraph, I'm thinking, non property, undirected. And also, the division, usually the Facebook do this kind of analysis by the distributed way. However, the distributed way of processing requires a division of the graph. And then that division is a computer centric approach. So the higher speed division, faster speed division, that is like now they are doing. However, I say that the catalog, budget file, that has an ownership, and then that is located in different point locations. So it's very hard to get together, right? So the ownership based division of the graph, that is another type of the, uh, another, another, things to, another thing to think about. Here's a demonstration. Um, I will show three demonstration fast, is a basic idea what we can do using the graph. The second video shows the different view user by user, okay? But the, using the same graph. The third video that shows many, many graph visualization, okay? So I'll go to the the video. So 
So here's a first one. So on the on the uh, top, uh, okay. So the top left, that is the user view, uh, is a kind of a navigation. Okay, the system provides the the set of the contents uh, maybe the user might uh, want to see. The left hand side that is a curator view. So um, curator now a uh, uh, choose right, and then the this is the contents making the barter file, and then choosing a set of the barter files making a cut drop. Okay, um, the at the bottom there is a Collins graph view, and then after. Uh, the curator register the file, register the batch of files and catalog, not question coming up. And then we can see the update version, the graph here. Right? Um, we have the side by side behind the after. This is a before and after. Okay. And then it has a link, it creates another link. So in, in the user view, we can see a new contents here, right? So the user and the curator is totally different people, but working together, it's far away, might know each other, might not know each other, but we can uh, make it happen. Okay, so uh, that is a repeating of the same thing. So I skip it and then go to the next, video. So this is the um, user by user, um, different, are uh, getting the different results, uh, changing the here, you can see the algorithm, and also the changing the favorite here. Um, so this is a user A view. Favorite track is like this. Okay. And then see the different, you know, the algorithm he choose. And then the results are different. We're using the same graph. However, the favorites are different than the different um, results coming up. Okay. So he now add it to the favorites, the different results. Okay, so let's go to the, the solid one. This is a, the graph view. Actually, the graph view is not the single way. Um, so we have a plenty of the graph uh, visualization. So maybe you feel that different feeling of the information from the graph difference. Okay, so back to the... Oh. Sorry for the bad time management. <laughs> oh, and the other demonstration video was created by Fujitsu. Thank you very much. So the Fujitsu people is coming here today. So um, I talked about how the graph uh, is created, but that is you know the content-wise viewpoint. Now I show you the computer system viewpoint. So how do how we realize it? So the graph system that is an ownership based decentralized management. Okay, so for example, starting from budget file uh, seven, so I'll go to the seven server, and then it has cat one, cat uh, four. So okay, uh, let's see uh, cat one, cat number one. So go to the cat one server. Where is the cat one server here, right? And then cat one. Uh, has a, a list of the budget file one three seven nine. Okay, so this is a cap one. Oh, this is a this is a one three seven nine. Okay, see the budget file one. Okay, they'll go to the budget file one server here. 
Oh, it has a cat one, cat two. Okay, let's see. Cat one is like now we have already. It's got a cat two. Let's go. Um, cat two is here, budget file one, 11, 12, or one, 11, 12, like this. So um, each of the servers here are uh, ownership based, like a mail servers, based um, uh, management. And each of the uh, servers has a, a list of the, you know, the budget files or the uh, like uh, this in the budget file to the catalog or the catalog to the budget files list, okay? And then combine those uh, things and then making this entire graph. Actually one by one, you know, just spreading outside, outside, outside. So that is a system here, it, the dark green, because this is a graph system. Um, on top of it, distributed uh, uh, the third party graph analysis engines and applications here. And then at the bottom, there is a content service. Combine all those folds, we can make these kind of things. And then I want to make it on top of the Nautilus. Okay, learning by doing is uh, the motto or the philosophy of the Cinegrid, I believe. So make it and then learn it and then learn it. That is what I want to do. But it's a totally a huge system, honestly. So I want to call for collaborators who wants to make applications, AI applications, who have the contents, who wants to develop that graph algorithm, who wants to picture as a graph, who analyze the contents, once the graph grows, it's fine, it's interesting. Managing the archive storage, access control or the security, that is very important because this is an information network. Uh, the global unique identifiers, many identifiers are proposed right now for the data, but which one is better? Anything else is fine, okay? So that is an ecosystem. This is a final conclusion, starting from how to let AIs work on top of 44,000 trillions of files. I said that coarse screen filtering by network or the flexible binding between the content and the service, that is important before getting those contents into the content AI. I believe that the, this graph approach using the budget files and catalogs will allow us to do what only Google can do that you believe right now, today, and more because we have third party enrollment. So <clears throat> thank you very much for the talk. And I'm sorry about the longer talk than expected. Any questions? And also if you're interested in, just uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.